Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Bass Singer First Time Reaction and Analysis. My name is Peter Barber. I am primarily a professional opera singer, music producer, and of course, a bass vocalist. It's been a while, but we are back to check out our second song uh, with So Young as the singer. This is Ari Wang Alone. I believe this is from the same uh, competition that we saw her in previously. She absolutely blew me away. It is, it's rare that I am so, so, so impressed by a vocalist at this point, especially um, a non-classical vocalist. Just because once you've heard, you know, thousands of voices, it's rare that one really sticks out. But she, her voice is really, truly amazing. Some of the things she does, I haven't heard any other singer do, for real. So I'm very excited to check this out. Um, please like the video. Please subscribe to the channel. Really, that's that's the big help. And then, of course, comment below for the algorithm. And if I'm enhancing your listening experience, if you are learning things about music, if I'm making music more enjoyable for you, please consider donating to my Patreon for as little as $1 a month. Link is in the description below. And guys, without further ado, let's check out So Hyung singing Ari Rong Alone. So starting out very subdued, a very nice light mechanism to her voice. Let's just see how high she got there in this first opening riff. Just very light <coughs> instrumentation. Sounds like I have some pizzicato strings happening. Some kind of guitar-like instrument plunking away back there with a little bit of sustain. Some very light sustain in the instrumentation with a little plucking. That note there. Let's see. Uh, up to a G. A G5, I believe. <laughs> up to a G5, so that's one perfect fourth below soprano high C. That's soprano high C. She's down here. She went D5, G5, then back down. And she's a very lighter mechanism. What I mean by that is less musculature of the vocal folds is actually coming together to phonate. It's really just the mucosal membrane, which is the edge of the vocal folds. Also, forgot to men mention this in the, in the intro. This, as is seen in all caps in the title, is an analysis video. Um, I have a pretty extensive background in uh, vocology, uh, voice science. And of course, I sing opera professionally. So I talk a lot about the voice and vocal techniques and like what's happening vocally and I do pause a lot so uh, if you're not into that or you haven't seen this video go check out the, the version I'll leave it below and then come back after you've watched it if you want to learn a lot about what's happening musically and vocally anyway she has a much lighter mechanism in this intro but as we saw in Bridge Over Troubled Water she has an amazing super chest voice dominant belt that she can take up about this high, which is insane. That was the thing I had never heard someone do before. Anyway, a lot of pausing, a lot of analysis, but uh, I will be reacting in real time, and you will see me probably freak out a little bit, which is very rare because her voice is awesome. All right, let's keep it going. Little light riff there. Something like that. Starting out nice and easy. Presents contrast. It gives her some place to go. Just like a I'm I'm going to assume a lot of people are recommending this one. Bridge over troubled water. Starts out very, you know, nothing flashy going on vocally, nothing flashy going on musically, and then she just opens the can. It's just shocking. So right now, just little riffs. We're keeping it, keeping it light, keeping the mechanism light in the voice. No, no heavy chest dominant singing yet. Mm -hmm. 
see right now, like she has a nice voice, but there's obviously nothing special about what's happening yet. It's all what she shows off later. So this is just this again is just very light, you know, and she's singing very well in tune, but it's just very light, breathy singing. You hear a lot of singers that can do this kind of singing. Uh, but I think it's great that she starts that way because it's very unassuming. You know, as an audience member, we are sitting back saying, oh, she's got a nice voice. Yeah, she's got a nice voice. Okay, she's singing in tune. Does some nice little tasteful riffs, nothing crazy. And then later, it's just like... <sighs> so it's a, it's a great way to start. It kind of lures people in. It gets them interested enough, but it leaves so much of what's really to be desired and amazed by her singing. It's just a pleasant voice, you know. It's just a, it's just a nice voice so far. Is this a famous? Is this a famous Korean folk song? I've I've heard chamber choirs sing, I think, versions of this song, but I didn't know and don't know the origin. But I believe she is a, a Korean singer, so perhaps this is a Korean folk song. Leave a comment below if you know the origins of Arirang and its various versions. Oh, it is beautiful, and I do love a nice lush string accompaniment. We actually we're in the we're about to go in. Opening night is our production of La Traviata, Traviata by Giuseppe Verdi. And our opening night is Friday. And for the last two days, we've been doing what's called the Zitz, Zitzpoba, which is a German word. Uh, basically the first time the singers get to sing with the full orchestra. And it, it just totally changes the game when you go from singing and rehearsals with the piano. Um, even with, you know, even with an, an ama amazing collaborative accompanist like we have, it's just such a different feel to have the whole orchestra underneath you when you're singing. It's an amazing thing. So just hearing those strings, since we're in the week of the orchestra with Traviata, just reminded me. Mm, what are we in here? Mm -hmm, G, G major. Okay. Getting a little one, two, three, one, two, three, a six, eight action in the instrumentation. And now we have a few backup singers coming in as well to support So Hyang on her on her singing here. Still, though, voice, it's still very much it's in a very singable place still. She has not she's not gone anywhere that most singers can't go yet. But um it's revving up. You know, it, we're we're revving up now. Oh. So that's the first phrase where we hear a little bit of the chest dominant belting starting to come in. So I'm just going to flag this phrase and if you just just back up, if you just back up some, you can you can quickly compare and contrast the difference between what she, everything she's done before and just listen and you can feel when it gets chest dominant, I mean really chest dominant singing high in your voice, big belting operatic singing it is like healthy yelling i mean you are the thing is most people if they tried to belt really high would just yell and a yell generally is when the vocal folds get turbulent meaning the phonation is not so pure it gets it gets more jagged and that's when you get the grit and the less efficient use of air and the sound you get when most people yell what you get in a trained singer that has a, a, essentially really strong trained thyroretinoid muscles in the vocal fold apparatus. Um, it's, the vocal fold is mostly TA, thyroretinoid and mucosal membrane. You build up that strength there, then you can, you, can, you can perform, you can sing as powerfully as a full-on yell while maintaining healthy vocal fold phonation. That is literally how at least the male voice types in opera sing really loud in their high range. We're fully chest dominant singing and it really is like healthy yelling. And you can tell when she goes into that, the sound gets uh, bitier 
meaning there's there's more vocal fold closure causing higher harmonics, higher partials in the sound. That's what that's the, what cuts really well. And you hear it come out really quickly. So just like pay attention to when it sounds like the voice just kind of comes right at you. It kind of sounds like it goes right in your ears. That's when you can tell she is adopting a more chest dominant sound, really getting towards that belt like quality that I mentioned early on. And she just kind of started to do it in this phrase here. Right there on the whoop, hum, it's already a little bit, there's better vocal fold closure than what we heard before. And it's louder. Obvious, right? Those, those two, again, you can hear it goes from less, from, you know, more heady to like a much more chest dominant, belty sound. Very wide E vowel. T. Like super spread. Usually, usually in like classical voice, obviously she's not singing classically. I'm just doing this as an interesting comparison. Usually in classical, if you're singing an E vowel, at least for men and especially in like lower parts of your range, you sing more like E, 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 because you want to maintain the warmth of the sound as opposed to. E, 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 e. By bringing the lips together, uh, it actually extends the vocal tract a little bit, changes the formants, changes the harmonics, makes the sound darker, essentially. Um, you would never see, unless it was for going for a certain color or a character choice, you wouldn't see an eval sung this far spread in opera, pretty much ever. Oh yeah, and the G with a little, just a little, just a little add of something right there at the end. That phrase again, more and more chest coming in there. This little riff going down there, just a tiny like three note riff. And pulls off, na -na, na -na, like really short, and then kind of pulls off real quick. It's like a little tasteful riff there. No, no. Ah. No, surely not. Surely not. This is much, you, that, that's this first and this sustained belt she's doing right here. Ah. Ah. So that's up to a, that's, that's a D5, okay. Just above tenor high C. That one. Up to the G5. God. Did she get up to the C? She does, she touches on the, okay, hold on. That sounds very, I mean, that G sounds very chesty, but there's no way that high C can be, that has to, that has to be some kind of head voice dipping down, creating like a voix mix kind of thing. I just don't think that's physiologically possible to sing a soprano high C in chest voice. 
G, a G, which I heard her doing the last one I did, was already higher than I'd ever heard anyone belt. No question. That's a belt. That's a straight up chest G5. What the hell, dude? That's insane. Now, I know she does have a strong head voice, so I'm wondering, and it is possible to develop the transition between the two, be really strong. Opera singer, female voice types and opera singers have crazy, crazy strong head voice. Like, their head voice is louder than anyone can belt, like ridiculously loud, like especially dramatic sopranos. So you can train it to where it is just as powerful as, or more powerful even than the chest dominant belting. What you can't tell because there's a microphone there is how loud one is to the next um, because it's going to be run through a system and it's going to be compressed so that more or less the volume stays the same no matter how loud it actually, the input actually is. That's a part of, that's a part of live performance um, that you get when you have microphones and amplification and such like that. So it's, it's hard to tell. It would, if it stays chest dominant completely, up to that high C, it would have to be getting louder and louder, probably to an extreme amount. Usually when you get close to your high range, it's like, okay, a little louder, a little louder, a little louder, and you get up close and it's like, okay, really friggin' loud right at the top because you're really stretching the vocal folds out. Anyway, I'm not, I'm not confident enough to say I know what's happening here, but it's wild. Oh, hmm. I love that flat six in there. You wouldn't expect that in a G major. You wouldn't expect that because then you're going into like a an Aeolian cadence or something. My favorite cadence in the world, by the way, flat six, flat seven, one in a major key. She she goes unless they switch to minor at some point. Hmm. Oh, maybe they are in minor now, actually. They are minor. Yeah, I guess they are in G minor now. That's my mistake. So that that pitch actually is in there. It just sounds nice to crunch to crunch crunch it against that five. This arrangement's getting crazy. Obviously, I'm not familiar with the original and the ones I've heard <clears throat> in a choir setting. <clears throat> Chamber choir, meaning no instruments. Uh, this is different. This is real different. Ooh. Oh, my God. I was just going to say this has Feeling Good by Nina Simone vibes, and then they're doing the progression. Doom, doom, doom. Dum, dum. Yeah, they're doing the same progression with the same. So that's head voice. Obviously, head voice. So up to a B, B flat five head voice. Clearly, head voice in this case. That's that, that's that Mike, Mike, uh, Mariah Carey stuff they talk about comparing her to. Uh, give me that riff. I love it. I, hey, I just love this song. I'm loving this crazy arrangement. Like, that middle section was totally unexpected. Um, and now we're getting into it, and I can tell this is getting into the section where she's going to have, once she gets through what this sounds like, some kind of second verse, third verse, whatever it is, she's going to have more freedom to just riff and belt and do her So Hyung thing. So let's get on with it.
Also, I like this uh, this conversation happening between the vocalist and the violinist here. I'm also, um, people are going to ask why I'm not commenting as much on this solo violin here. I really focus on the voice because that's what I know best. So here I am acknowledging this is a wonderful violinist. I just can't, despite having been around orchestras for the last 10 years in opera, I'm no expert at skill on violin, so generally I'll hush, but um, I focus more on the vocals. I was saying I like the trade-off they're having. It's like a conversation between the vocalist and the violinist. Yeah, nice flip up. And you can tell her strength is like this almost like gospel kind of feel again, where it, we the band and the other instrumentalists provide and the backup singers, they provide this foundation, but it, it allows for a lot of repetition um, and it allows for freedom for So Hyung to explore her voice and riff and do kind of whatever she wants as long as it stays within some kind of contextualization of the music happening in the background. But check out this flip up to head voice. Everyone's singing along, so yeah. In this culture, this must be a popular song. Maybe even this version of it. It seems like this is a, like, that middle section didn't strike me as traditional. That sounded pretty kind of avant-garde, um, but who knows? I don't know. <laughs> I like how she intentionally sat under it for a second. Set a half step under that D. Again the high again the high G's. Something I didn't know was humanly possible to belt, and she's doing it in every video I've seen so far. Yeah, I'm with him. I'm with him. The drums are going absolutely bonkers in the background. Listen to the drums. <laughs> Come on. Come on, baby. Give it to me. I remember she, that was similar to the ending of Bridge Over Troubled Water where there's this huge high belt and craziness. And then I remember at the end she goes, I will lay me. Before she sings the last ah, high, super high belt, she just says, I will lay me. And it was like so powerful, like totally away from the singing, just speech. She didn't do that here, but she did something close to it, which is essentially just bringing the voice back to where she started the song in that much more breathy, you know, not compressed phonation, not stretching the folds, the kind of singing that, you know, most people can do. Um, 
Just like a naturally kind of beautiful, nice voice. Oh, she's one of my favorite singers. Straight up, she is one of my favorite singers. Uh, I think she's phenomenal. I think she has incredible range, incredible transition from an already legendary high chest voice into her head voice. So she does have the Mariah Carey thing going on with those like, the only thing I haven't heard her do in terms of comparison to Mariah Carey is the really high whistle tones that Mariah Carey does. But in terms of the riffing and the chest belting, for sure I hear that. I think So Young, I'd have to dig back on Mariah Carey. I haven't listened much since I learned about singing. I'm pretty sure So Young can belt higher. Like I said, I've never heard someone belt up to a G and possibly even higher on this one. It really is hard to say where that where that balance shifts from like really chest dominant to more head dominant because it seems like she has a ton of control over both. Just wildly talented. Wildly talented. And I am already looking forward to the next one. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed. If you enjoyed, if I enhanced your listening experience, please consider donating to my Patreon. It helps support me as a young singer, helps support this channel, helps support all the big projects that I am trying to accomplish as well in my own musical career and my musical pursuits. But if you don't have the funds for it, um, or for whatever reasons you have, please do give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel because that is free, costs absolutely nothing, and I do a lot of content like this. If you're still watching, definitely subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification um, so you'll be notified, and leave a comment for the algorithm. That is actually really helpful. That is one important metric of how YouTube measures engagement is just comment anything. You can just say hi. Doesn't matter. Uh, or you can spill out all your thoughts and feelings on this video and my commentary. That's fine, too. Uh, but that's it, guys. This was So Young, Arirang Alone, I believe from the same show she did, Radio for Troubled Water. If you want to hear more So Young, comment below. Comment your favorite songs that she has done. And I will very likely get around to them. I wouldn't say that about every artist that I, uh, that I cover, uh, that I listen to and analyze, but... Um, it will be hard for me not to just go binge all this stuff on my own because I think she's phenomenal. Anyway, y'all, that's it. I will see you next time. Hope you enjoyed. Peace.